How often do you get imposter syndrome? Even after 15 years as a developer, I still feel like I don't know shit about f This is normal. That was one of my favorite lines of the Ozarks. Absolutely favorite line. Ruth was my favorite character, okay? Also, this graph is pretty good, right? I can never tell, am I right here with HTMX or am I right here with HTMX? I'd like to say I'm right here. Since gaining experience in a field reveals the huge number of skills you have to master. However, what if we are focusing on the wrong set of skills? What if we are getting distracted by all the noise and our acquired experience is actually irrelevant? Are we really becoming better developers in this case? This is an obvious issue in the front-end world where learning a framework is the number one priority for most devs. Never mind the decade of complaints. That's fair. I mean, obviously experience is worth a huge amount, right? Experience is the single greatest thing to go with you. But, it, it, but it's more like, what experience? That's the question you need to ask yourself is, what experience goes with you? Some experience is really great, but it's only good in a particular situation and if that situation is no longer employable then you also lose i know we got some we got some third eye coming in hard right now reworks and breaking changes in the framework space companies and developers are still betting on these bloated tech stacks hoping for quick short-term wins the long-term results however are complex systems with tons of technical depth hidden complexity and various workarounds which are actually creating worse developers let it's an interesting take. I don't think the large front-end frameworks are the root cause of it. I think they're more of a symptom. You know, I've been in, I've been in a home-brewed framework situation before. And in the home-brewed framework situation, it also turned into spaghetti and mess. You know what I mean? So I, I'm not 100% convinced on that one. Uh, laziness is. Laziness is the reason. Again, I don't think that's it either. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm a developer. I cut as many corners as the next developer, okay? When there's a corner to be cut, I'm cutting it, checking, my, checking it twice and cutting that soon as possible. But not all corners being cut are equally valuable. Some you can cut, it's not even difficult. Some you can cut and it's really, 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 really expensive. So I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't I don't think I believe that frameworks are the root cause of the mess. I would say that building a product and having someone attempt to abstract the product to be able to fit every need possible and then as new needs and unforeseen challenges arise, you morph a design that was not designed with that in mind to fit it in. And you do that over years. And what ends up happening is it becomes an untenable mess. You really try to, I mean, it's, it's one of my big problems with reusability and abstraction. People really do attempt to make everything possible. And when you use these everything possible abstractions, you necessarily have to shoe in or shoehorn in specific use cases, which just often lead to really wonky items. I do Let me think, explain what I mean by I do think frameworks need more specialization, less, less everything. I do agree with that. This video was supposed to be a light-hearted overview of a small game written in Venge.js, but the code Tao Sin is writing is fascinating in its simplicity. If you are not familiar with Van, this is an ultra-light reactive UI framework which offers all the functionality you would expect from a modern library in under 140 lines of code. Despite its tiny code base, you can build anything with Van, including browser games. And this is what should raise some red. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I just went right into fry mode. 140 lines to do who's he, what's he now? Sus. Red flags. How, How many extensions are there, right? How many extensions are we talking? Commit is widely accepted to send tens of kilobytes of JavaScript to the browser to build a basic app when options like Van offer almost the same capabilities in 900 bytes. To put things into perspective, let's take a look at the history of the most popular front-end framework. React started as a lightweight library to build UIs and, in the span of 10 years, went through the following phases. Use classes to define components and lifecycle hooks to run your own- I literally have a short where I end at HTMX. Code in the React context. Deprecate class components in favor of functional components. 
change the API and mark lifecycle hooks and save. He did miss one step in between these two, which was a rethinking of class component lifecycle methods in which some set were considered unsafe and some weren't. <coughs> so, <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> How'd I do it to myself twice? So in between here and here, there was component will receive props and component un unsafe component will receive props. There was component will mount and component did mount. Then component will mount became unsafe component will mount. So there's actually a step in between where they re-swung the class components, but with a whole new set of functions. Provide hooks like use memo and use callback to pass the burden of a poorly designed reactive system onto the developer. Finally, decide that the browser is not good enough to build UIs and introduce server components. This might be a hard... So I actually look at server components as a net win, to be real. Uh, I think server components are moving people towards thinking about the server, but I think it's doing it in the worst way possible, but at least you're thinking about the server now. And I think that there's a real win there. The server is a great place to drive logic. I think it's great. I think, I think you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Server components are a great win in the right direction. I just don't like what they do, and I think that they're going to be horribly complicated, and I think within a year and a half, uh, people are going to be completely, probably pendulum swinging back to the client. I think we're going to get a really weird next bit of time. By right direction, you mean backwards? I think that if you think the client is the place to do everything, I think you fundamentally have not written enough applications. Hot take, but we are witnessing entropy in action. It's far more difficult to maintain and understand the React codebase now compared to 10 years ago, even though the problem we are solving is still the same and we have access to better hardware and more reliable internet connections. This is not a React rent. In all fairness, all other popular alternatives went through similar major reworks, with Angular yep. announcing its second renaissance just a couple of weeks back. So, back to my question. Is fighting framework fires really making you a better developer? It seems to me that keeping things simple is way more difficult than maintaining a complex system, and if you really want to grow as a developer, you should try to achieve more by writing less. I for one can hold my own in any large React or Angular project with piles of third-party libraries doing God knows what under the hood. However, I'm not so... Do you like how they had that? This is just like some program typing for this guy. Like they, did, they didn't even get somebody just typing code. They did all this setup for nothing. Not only that, but whatever's on this monitor is over here on this monitor as well. Confused by this setup. And lastly, why would you have a monitor... Why would you have empty space in betwixt? You know what I mean? Empty space in betwixt two monitors, which is also the center of your vision? Crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy. Doesn't make any scene. Girl in the back. Look, she's actually just staring disappointingly at him through the center where she should be looking at code. Okay? If she was using code, she would have seen not him and being upset, but instead, she would have saw code. Just saying. God knows what under the hood. However, I'm not so sure I could maintain that simplicity, solid elegance, or the original ideas behind a framework like Wick. If you want to explore some minimalistic frameworks in more detail, here are some videos you might like. Until next time, think. So what's the... I do want to see this framework that he's talking about, though. This, this is, seems really cool. This Van.js. I don't know what Van.js is. Oh, look at that website. Can, can you complain about a website like this? Van.js is 0.9 KB grab and go reactive UI framework without React slash JSX. Honestly, not bad. 900 bytes to give you this. All right, that's pretty cool. They must be using setters underneath the hood. That's my guess. They're just using setters underneath the hood to kind of drive some of this functionality. But still, pretty cool. I'm curious how I, I'm curious uh, curious how it is, right? Um, look at the code. Yeah, we could look at the code. Abbreviated vanilla JavaScript. Uh, wh where is it? Is is any of these a GitHub? Okay, that one's a GitHub. Let's look at the code really quickly because I'm actually curious about this. Source. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Got him. Got him right there. I mean, yeah, like, I, I definitely don't like, like, when I see this, I, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this code right here. 
Uh, just gonna throw that out there that uh, when I see that, I you know I'm not loving it. You know I'm not I'm not loving what I'm looking at. I'm curious how they produce these tags, right? There has to be somewhere that defines these tags. What are the possible tags? Where do they define them at? That's what that is what is so curious to me because I don't see anywhere that has like div p all these kind of things. You know what I mean? I think I could enjoy doing this a little bit because sometimes you need a bit of client-side interactivity, just a bit, not a ton, but just enough to make it, uh, you know, worthwhile. And you have your HTMX, and the HTMX is used to kind of drive the Chrome, the server is bringing down the Chrome, bringing down all that, but then you have your, like your Conway's Game of Life or whatever in the front, and you want an easy way to kind of be able to change stuff, be able to hook up interactivity and all that. So you want a nicer way to drive things. No, see, I don't want to use Astro because I like Astro. I do like Astro. Uh, but the, the, the grand failure right now is still the same thing, which is the moment you want client-side interactivity, the moment you flick client is true, React comes down. Everything just comes piling down, and you just get a ton and a ton and a ton of JavaScript. So can you get something that has okay stuff, Reject modernity, return to Web 2.0. I'm not sure. I, you know, I, I you know, may, you know, the mistakes have been made. They have HTML tags. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I can check out. Uh, uh, is it Sosin? Sosin, right? Is that how you say his name? I heard him say it. It's like Sosin, right? Am I saying that right? I'm excited about that. React isn't so bad when it's small and focused. Yeah, I mean, like any library is not bad, small and focused. When you build something that's a few hundred lines of code, React is super, super, super understandable. But so is any library, right? I bet you this library, whether it's good or bad, will still be very understandable. So not boost. Okay, fine. Not boost, but everything else. Rust is not bad, small and focused. Rust is not bad, small and focused either, right? Don't ban me. I know. Those are respectful crabs. I get that. All right. Hey, the name is I could, I, I'm going to give this library a try. We'll try it out on my next project, which is coming very, very soon. A gen.